I'm feeling all right. It's it's feeling pretty good right now. You know what I mean? Waiting for some more people to show up. Get it Love going. It. Do a little bit this of a set. This guy's got too many ears to the streets. Yeah, we're up. We're up. He's a happy looking guy. And he loves me. For real. rappers around here that that are that are just amazing and, and the reason they are is because they lived real life you know they've been in the gutter with me you know what I mean they've been shot with me you know they've been stabbed with me they've been hungry with no food sitting in a sitting in a cold ass house with no electricity in the winter time selling crack you know, I'm still here. I'm still here for a reason. And I'm going to make that reason count. I'm Johnny Anderson, but uh, most people call me Tom Adah. Uh, I live in North Central, you know, we from the hood. Uh, just doing our music, getting this thing happening. And these little guys came up to us, maybe both 14, 15 years old, and they're like, you Tommy, you're Tommy Da, right? And I was like, yeah, and then they called all their buddies over and they're all just wanting autographs and shit. And I was like, dude, I live down the block, you know what I mean? You don't need my autograph. I grew up in foster homes and, you know, in uh, detention centers and things like that, you know, so I didn't have the people around me or, or the positive energy to uh, somebody to say, I love you, you know, I'll, I'll take care of you, you know, I got you. You know, I didn't have that, I had to do it myself. We are right now. We're we're in the fucking belly of the beast, if you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> say I don't know. It's the syndicate house. That's a good shit. This house is good. Come on, let me introduce you to everybody. <laughs> I used to go with my little brother to these rap battles, right? Because he was really good. And uh, it would just be me and him going to these battles in town or out of town. And my brother would turn it around to where he'd have everybody, you know, in the whole whole building on him, you know what I mean? Like, he, you know, he'd just say some crazy ass shit. Like, 
I don't know, it's just some crazy shit, like you couldn't even hear, I'm a son of a gun, no, no, I'm a son of a bum, actually, I'm your dad, when I come in your mom, and everybody, oh, you know, it just gave me this tingle inside, like, oh, I wish I could do that, and I started doing it, and then I started getting really good at it. And on a lighter note, I got this shit like I'm a fighter, but I'm addicted to dope, I'm about to take a toe, I don't give a shit, because I spit every note, like I'm so fucking dope, like my rhymes is rolling coke. No, I make the fucking weed fucking choke. I don't care because that kush got me spoiled. No, I spit it like I'm feeling like I'm royalty. There's a lot of Aboriginal rappers around here that that are that are just amazing, and and the reason they are is because they lived real life. You know what I mean? They. You know, they've been in the gutter with me, you know what I mean? They've been shot with me, you know, they've been stabbed with me, they've been hungry with no food, sitting in a sitting in a cold ass house with no electricity in the winter time, selling kill, crack out of, you know? That's that's the real shit, you know, and that's just that's just what makes you who you are. Three years gone really is nothing but a problem. I'll put middle fingers to the judge and say your case I'll fucking solve them. Your favorite rapper I'll fucking rob him. Your favorite fucking band I got him. And any fucking snitch dog, I was the one who fucking shot him. Yeah. Fuck with me, boy. Easy. That's how he got him. I'm sick of whack ass wanna say that you rap. Doesn't even matter if they really wanted to bust back. I'm in for ridiculous. Twist MCs up like licorice if they actually wanted to hear a little beat. Spit a bit. Yeah, go ahead. You be illiterate. Trying to say that you actually wanted to rip apart the microphone that actually had to handle what it had to spit a bit. And you have all these other guys out there and they're living the same lives and they're spitting about it and then, you know, the good times and the bad and you just relate to people because that's what makes music you know that's what makes people want your music is when they can relate to it you know they hit home to a lot of first nations in the hood right they know the lyrics they have what they want to say to us and we believe what they say and we like what they say so obviously we're not gonna say hey what they rap about is not true because obviously they do they know us and what we believe in and them they sing over and over again they come true all the time when I spit about it, you know, especially about something meaningful, I spit it where if you hear it, you know, you're going to get chills out of your back, even if you've never been in yourself in, in, in a situation like that, you know. Like, think, think of your mom's in the street, straight selling her ass. The girl is only 16 and she don't even laugh. Plus a rehearsal bad just to think of her past. Her mom was perfect, but her dad was always beating her ass. Teachers always making fun of her in front of the class. People push her to the point where there's no turning back to the point where she thought it would help to sell herself. Now she finds it selling it for money for milk. I bet she's got a couple of kids dying to eat. A few years later, one of them kids die in the street. Now there's just one left holding on to his last breath, just him and his mom screaming to God, what the fuck's next? And I just spit about shit like that, you know? Like, like real shit. I'm a gangster. I'm gonna be here, you know, this is my life. Baby, when you're gone, I can't sleep. There ain't nothing in this world that means more to me. I love you, my kids. I wish and my wish came true. I'm your friend, I'm your dad, I'm your number one fan. If I can talk to somebody that's that's going down that path, you know, like I said before, I don't want any of these little guys feeling those feelings. You know what it's like to be sitting in a cell when you're 14 years old and all you want is your, your mom or your dad to come and get you, you know, and when they come see you, all they say to you is, you got what you deserved, see, you shouldn't have done that. Well, a lot of these little girls out here, they, they grew up without a dad. They grew up and then they're 14, 15 years old looking for this father figure and, and along comes this little little boy that sweet talks to them, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's, just, it's just set up for heartbreak. I don't want my daughter to be heartbroken like that, you know? It drives me crazy because I know how I was when I was young, you know what I mean? I, I was Mr. Tell You What You Want to Hear. Okay. This is my best friend <laughs> in the whole world right here. Well, she's a good this best bitch friend. right here. <laughs> every day that I was sitting locked up in the fucking joint and everybody posted on my Facebook, get home soon, Tommy Da. This bitch right there, she sat there and talked with me. I fucking probably run up her bill like fucking $3,000. When you're doing three years in the pen, it feels like you're never coming home. You know, you almost want to give up and, and just, just end it. I don't know if I, it's strong or weak, you know? Maybe I wasn't strong enough to do it or maybe I wasn't weak enough to do it. Yeah, he's a big Mr. Tough Guy to everybody or whatever, but I think underneath everything, he's a sweet, normal guy. Like, he cares a lot about other people. Not selfish and a complete dirtbag like usually everybody says. 
not gonna sugarcoat it for any of them, you know what I mean? I'm doing what I'm doing and, and they can say, oh, you a piece of shit. Okay, well, guess what? I'm a piece of shit to take care of my mama. I'm a piece of shit to take care of my daughter. I'm a piece of shit that looks out for my brothers. I'm a piece of shit that treats everyone equal. So if I'm a piece of shit, whatever, you know? These guys went like got a group of each other, you know, and it was all my friends, you know what I mean? But they just fucking wicked turned on me. Cause I was gonna fucking blast them, you know what I mean? They did that to my you know, so they turned on me and shit shit happens, you know, but it makes you stronger. And then I met some other guys, you know, some some dudes that showed me some real love and shit like that, so I got down, you know. And that's what it's about. Syndicate City. Family, you know what I mean? Brothers. They know that, you know, no matter where you are in this motherfucker, all you need is a phone call and you ain't gotta worry. You go to the pen and, and people ask if you got a criminal record and stuff, you, you can't you can't get a job, you know? So it's either sell dope or rap, you know what I mean? And I'm kinda tired of jail. Judge, look at this. Look at the charge. You know what I mean? He's like, well, we, we'll get the paperwork and then we'll come back in a month. And I'm like, nah, man, because this is a breach. I wouldn't even be in here for a month if I pleaded guilty to it. And then the prosecution was like, something like seven months for <laughs> for a breach. And I was like laughing. I was like, straight the fuck out with that shit. You know what I mean? I'll do 21 days, man. And then the judge said. You know, when I pleaded guilty, he's like, all right, I'll give you 14 days. And I was out in eight days, you know, so I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let anybody try, tread on me, you know. And if you're going to tread around me, you better tread lightly. There's a lot of things that I did in my past that people can't believe. It's hard for them to believe because they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to do it in that situation. They, you know, there's... There's no hesitation in me, you know, and I will never hesitate. And if my life is on the line for something, then the only reason I'm going to stay alive is because of me. And I know that. Sometimes, you know, regardless of what's happening, I'm going to lose, you know what I mean? But do I lose a, do I lose a winner or do I lose a loser? You know, and that might not make sense to you, but that's just the way I was brought up that's something that you know um, is instilled early in me from my dad you know he he may not have been around for that much you know what I mean but he taught me how to fight and he taught me to be tough and and I have to appreciate him for that because if it wasn't for that you know I wouldn't be half the I wouldn't have done half the crazy shit I've done take a left